and uh, welcome back to our live streaming of this um, painting of Turok versus a T-Rex. Now, as you can see here, there has been a lot of changes since I last live streamed. Um, I'm just going to go through and kind of show you why and what I did. Okay, so... Just... All right, so first of all, I'm gonna set it up to what it was previously. So previously when we left off, it looked like um, this. So what I wasn't liking is how far away this drawing was from my original sketch, which I just felt had more like fluidity and like express the action a lot better so what i did is i basically first thing i did was i t resized him to be closer to oh, i don't know why my resize oh wrong layer Okay, there we go. So first I just resized him back up to closer to the size that he was here. And one of the things I didn't like is that his body is kind of turned now, like this way from the original sketch. Um, so here he's way more square to the to the picture where in here his body is kind of turning more this way and you can see that because we can see the bicep here and then the triceps behind it um, where in the original sketch it's more tricep dominant here and then the biceps kind of hidden and the shoulders kind of hidden behind I just like that better I just found that he wasn't really facing the um, the T-Rex as much. So here's what I came up with. I'm just going to grab this other version here. Oops. Uh, just lock that layer for now. Um, okay, so here. So this is kind of what I had there before. So what I did is I first I just kind of took this kind of area here and I ended up putting that on a new layer. And then I grabbed this section here, kind of like the rib cage or more this section here and what I kept doing was I would put that on the layer under the chest layer and what I do is I'd move it back and further um, kind of um, changing the angle a little bit so it's more stacked underneath the chest and I kept doing that all the way down to the hips yep All right, and also what I did is I looked more at some reference for the the highlights. Um, I took off the armbands for now. I might put them back later. Let's take away that. So you can see, like I just did a f like a little bit more on the highlighting there, and the major thing was I changed the head a lot. So I found this reference of a face kind of yelling and more in the position I was going for. And basically I just kind of edited the face. I shortened the nose and I um, kind of just tilted the head a little bit more and um, just kind of used this as kind of like a reference for the highlighting. And that's how I got to where I'm currently at. 
Also, you can see here, instead of having the kind of loincloth thing going through his legs, I instead had it flowing kind of up. Um, I just felt that had a better energy. And um, yeah. So I added some more details here. I put a feather and then I put kind of the, the crest thing he has over his ear there as well. All right, and now color wise, I was playing around here. Um, it's just so dull. Um, so I'm deciding to probably go with something more like that. And what that is, it's, it's a layer of, here, let me change the opacity of that layer. So right now it's, so it should be something like that of a color. And then what I did was, uh, I think it was a difference mat over top my original backdrop of this. And then I just kept lowering the opacity there until it was kind of a nice, just gives, it's way more dramatic lighting than what I had before. And it will play better once I start adding those colors into the, um, into the actual figure itself. All right, so I'm gonna continue kind of working on the figure here. Now that we're all caught up with the changes I made, sometimes um, because I'm working so in tight in here, I'll get kind of um, off track a little bit, I feel with, um, with kind of the where I want to be and then when I take a look at it after the fact is when I really realize kind of the areas that need some changes. I'm just gonna lighten certain areas up here a bit. don't like that. I like the harder highlight there. When I say harder highlight I just mean that it's more um, sharper it's not softened at all oh, I feel like this is kind of an odd shape here I'm just gonna have to somehow move this section over a bit to my free transform tool again. I'm just gonna widen that so it makes a little bit more sense. And then I just gotta fix up these seams here after. So I've kind of got a way of working in this program now that, um, that I kind of developed now over the past three three streams that works a lot better than at the start at the start of the stream you'll find me that I was really floundering trying to figure out this program because I usually paint in Photoshop so it's just it was a little bit of a learning process to more figure out how to get the results I wanted out of this one size up a little bit there yeah so let's just start putting in the shadow there of the spear that's better 
Now, one thing I've also noticed, um, like the textured blender, I don't like usually I don't use these blending brushes, but it's nice just on these like edges where I've been um, resizing and and um, really editing a lot. Um, can just soften them, soften up some of those edges. Sometimes it works good. Sometimes it works poorly. But like these sections here, you can see maybe there's a little bit of white halo going on, just from like constantly cutting, pasting it out from different sections here. And I did eventually. I did try bringing this over to Photoshop and just doing a some minor edits just since I know that program a little bit better. Um, so that's probably also why I'm getting that fringing there. All right. Trying not to get too obsessed with like the being zoomed in all the way here and um, overdoing stuff detail wise, especially at this point. We're still quite a ways away from having a finished piece here. Probably not this episode, but it'll probably be two or three episodes probably till it's completely finished. Make sure that and grab a harder brush, harder edge brush there. Just to get the line of the shadow in kind of where I want it. Now just as I um, added kind of some of the I'm gonna add some of the color from the sky here to the to kind of the highlighted kind of areas here I'm gonna do the same thing with need that a little bit brighter than that I'm just gonna grab a little bit brighter version of that tone Yeah, so you see how that's just pulling him out from the background a little bit more? Plus it also looks a little bit more of a natural highlight than what it originally had there. You know what, that's under shade, it might not uh, too much there, but I'm gonna add, let's just do a little bit uh, highlight. Oh. Way too much. A little bit of highlight there. So many plot places where I have kind of real, kind of the brighter highlights going on. I'm just gonna play with there a little bit of that tone. What I want it softer. I'm gonna grab a, a more of a soft airbrush because what I'm really doing is just tinting the 
I really want to be doing is just tinting the what's already there a little bit. I feel like that's. Oh yeah, it is working. Yeah, so you can see already that looks a lot better than it did. I'll get the smaller. I don't really want. Then go grab the hard brush again. I don't really want that around the nose there. Now we're going to do something similar too. I'm going to grab kind of like the darker tones here. And I'm just going to start adding a little bit of that tone into my shadows here. Oh, not dark enough. Still not dark enough. It's lightening it up. You just gotta kind of play around there. And you could do a multiply layer and just kind of grab like the darkest tone of the sky there and do that, but I want to kind of spot, do kind of a spot um, variation of it. So just in certain spots be picking where I'm kind of doing it instead of just doing it everywhere so just to kind of add some variation because your skin is not all going to be one tone so you kind of want to get in there and vary up some of it a little bit here grab kind of more of a yellowy greenish tone here too this where where I have some transition from like a mid tone to more of a, like a highlight I might be going a little strong with that tone, but you can do the same thing. Like I said, I'm multiplying like a blue, um, where you want to do it. There's some people who are real masters of this. I'm not yet of kind of getting that good skin tone variation um, guys who are really good at it are like um, Frank Frazetta was amazing at it and I'm just grabbing more of that darker redder tone of the sky adding that back in here it's kind of you tend to where there's a dark like a really dark um, shadow you tend to get like kind of a reddish um, tone coming out of it if you look at um, 
Look at the way light kind of works with the translucency of the skin. So your skin isn't totally opaque. That's why when you're, if you put a flashlight up to your hand, you know, you get that kind of, you, you'll see that kind of really bright reds and oranges show up. Um, the transparency of your skin. I'm also going to add it into spots where I know that the sun is going to hit more, where he's going to tend to have a little bit more um, melanin buildup in his skin, like upper chest. Um, upper chest, uh, shoulders area, like forehead and nose and stuff. I think I went a little too much there, at the, but you can always just grab the, the other color that you had used first and just kind of go over it there. Yeah, there's some spots so that's just too much. Uh, just over highlighted probably that area, so I'm just dulling it down a bit. Now, if I was working traditionally, I'd be doing this with um with kind of like a thinned out wash over things, just to at least in the, like in like an acrylic medium or something. I haven't really played around with oils too much, but I assume it's very similar because a lot of the techniques I use were actually originally oil painting techniques. So with the tinting and stuff, I really probably should do the hand there. That's just kind of completely in shot and uh, shadow there, but okay, wrap. Oop. Oh, come on. Okay. Don't know why I'm getting a lighter color. That's the color that it's picked. Um. Oh, sorry. I was on a racer. <laughs> again. Here we go. I'm going to grab some of this darker tone here and just soften that edge between them. I don't want that to be darker than it is. Okay, so I'm liking kind of the way that he's looking now. I'm just checking it on my second monitor here because, like I said before, my um, this Unova drawing tablet monitor it doesn't have the best color in the world, that's for sure. And right now, I'm getting lots of interference on this cable from something else. Maybe if I turn that off, it's very annoying and hard to get rid of. <laughs> Eventually I'll switch out this monitor, but it's uh, not cheap to change these. I'm just going to kind of stir it in there. It's, mm, don't want any taper on it. What if I do that? Uh, 
What's that do? It's a little bit better. I'm gonna add some of the fringing here. Now, if you remember, we used um, this guy here as kind of a reference for how he's going to be decked out. He's probably a little short. That's okay. Oh, let's go in. Like the little. Remember, you can always go back in and refine stuff so stuff is looking not the way you want it. Don't worry, you can always go in and fix it. No kind of rhyme or reason to the way I'm doing these. will be defined more when the when I go in there with the highlight. On the side, it's probably gonna be trickier. It's a little bit closer to the camera. You're gonna have a little bit longer strands. When you look at like um, some of like the Renaissance masters, um, how they painted, you'll see that because the, they didn't have photography yet, a lot of their stuff has um, like the um, what's in focus and what isn't. Like everything tends to be more sharp um, and in focus. Um, that you can see in like, um, like Da Vinci did a lot of, like started using a lot of the, like, um, um, the like atmospheric effects. So when stuff in, in the distance is losing its opacity and, um, and it's contrast. So they did figure some of that stuff out but you'll see later in like um oh why am i drawing a blank on his name now um the dutch painters um you'll see where they were using like a like almost like a camera um lens to kind of um I think it was like the camera obscura or something it was called to, to um, kind of compose their their stuff from their still life so they weren't just like constantly your eyes the problem is is that your eyes when you're looking at something it's going to focus on anything you're looking at so you can't just like get a mind's eye picture of what's going to be in focus and what isn't unless you know that that's happening so that's where you see like see kind of that evolution now I can't remember exactly why I was bringing that up but <laughs> but even though you might look at some like some of that stuff and and um, some of the art history stuff and get kind of like bogged down or um, not really understand why it's good to know these things but like why not just teach you the technique not the history of it but it all kind of helps inform inform you of the perspective like just because you're doing something some way today 
doesn't mean that there won't be a better way of doing it tomorrow. And if you kind of know how, because um, there's people that do think like people shouldn't work from from photographs, but um, um, then you're going to have that same kind of look. So it's just good to know why um, you develop these kind of looks to your to your stuff. I'm not going to go in there and be like super detailed on each thing of this because what what you really want is impressions. That's where a lot of style comes in. Um, you want to give the impression so people know what it is. Um, a lot, a really good um, thing to try to do every now and then is try to depict something with as little lines as possible. Um, That will kind of help with um, you kind of understanding the um, the way things, um, you know, you'll just get better at depicting stuff quickly. And it's kind of like um, pictograms, like the, what the, or like hieroglyphs, like it's getting the impression of something across and and that's basically what you really need to do. You don't really need to go in there and that's kind of the problem with where, where people get obsessed with realism when they're doing a lot of photo, um, working from photos a lot. I think you kind of got to do both or else you're never going to develop like the shorthand of stuff. Um, shorthand basically is like, I know how to depict kind of like a nose jutting out of a face, even though it might not be 100% realistic to like, if I, if you um, took a photograph of that same angle, but it's realistic enough that I can kind of stylize some things. I think sometimes you, th like, I don't personally like doing a lot of just sketching um, in the way of like not finished pieces um, where people just are doing just hundreds of little sketches of this or that. Personally, I like to take it a little bit further, um, but it's an important step and you got to do it at some point. Like just because you don't like to do it doesn't mean that it's not going to help you progress. Um, like doing like little 30 second sketches um, really will help you not get too in the weeds. The way I say it of like you're getting too obsessed with stuff that doesn't matter when you you're just trying to give an impression because you're not really trying to depict reality you're trying to depict a mood you're trying to invoke a feeling with your artwork usually um or or also i believe a lot in um artwork as entertainment um so you're just trying to um but that's all still just eliciting a reaction out of somebody um when they see the piece so why did I do that there? I just found the, that it had a little too, it was a little too bright um, considering where the light source is that would be hitting it. Um, this whole area here seems a little too bright. Just trying to darken that without really muddying it up too much. It is going to muddy it up and I'll have to go back in there, but I'm trying to do that without having to redo too much. Not that it's that hard to do. To re come in here with the harder brush and just kind of picking that stuff. It's also with the thing is a lot of people 
obsess about you know ten thousand hours and you gotta be of course they'll all make you better but it can also just burn you out um, best way to create like obsession and like continuing to um, progress you do kind of get an obsession but it's, you generally want it to be because you really like something it's not because you feel a need to um, forcing yourself because um, then you're you're probably gonna at some point just be treading water and not getting any better really if you have no real interest that's why I, I take really long breaks from doing any artwork sometimes sometimes it'll take me seriously months I'm still doing creative stuff I'll be doing more like video stuff but of like if I'm saying I'm more, more meaning of like a, a certain medium or I'll be doing way too much um kind of um, pen and ink style work and I will just need time off from doing that I'll do more digital painting both those skills are very different but both very important um, and me developing Changing mediums is really important to me. You just, it changes the way, like the way I work in black and white has totally changed from be, just because of the way I paint. You're doing a lot more, um, like I have a, I used to do more of like a, almost like an animated character style work where you're really outlining but there's no real tone being used or in the piece um, you're not generating anything with any hatching or anything like that you're kind of just um, kind of working in a specific manner so that kind of stuff I've definitely see the value in and switching up your mediums and it will really help you f figure out um, kind of different ways of doing things I'm using a really hard brush on this part just because it's a it, just because it's um, got like real kind of like pattern to it Like I say, I'm just kind of suggesting it here. I'll just go in here and something you'll also realize as you when you work in um, if you've been doing a lot of black and white and you start working in color, like it's really weird. Um, a color next to another color can make that color a totally different value when you actually look at it. Um, if you put a like this is a brown, like a beige, but next to this, um, when I put it next to this color, they look like the same value. Like it's just um, stuff that you'll notice like that. I'm just going in there and putting just a few highlights on the fringing, just so it gives it a little bit more dimension. I'm just going to grab a darker value now. Uh, you know what? A lighter value is giving me a little bit better separation. Just since it's over that color anyways, it's, it was just um, kind of getting lost. these 
raise the hair, that kind of area to be brighter than it is. Oh, in here I'm not as worried about it because a lot of his chest is going to be I want it kind of on this side but not as much on the tips it's because that's going to be what's facing the lighting source a little bit more Yeah, so you see how that just kind of gives a impression. I kind of went a little light on it, but um, in spots, but yeah, I'm liking the look of that too. I forgot I was going to go in there and work on those hands. Now I'm not working all on one layer, um, just so I can use my eraser to kind of, um, and my um, selection tool to, to kind of define the shapes better. Thumb here, and you got the section of the next section of the thumb, kind of like that. And I gotta put his thumb kind of over like that. So I'm just kind of doing out sections here. And he's gonna have his one knuckle coming over, and then kind of where the Cross. And now his thumb's coming up way too high there, so I'm just gonna not worry about the thumb for a second. I will put the thumb in after I get these fingers figured out. is going to come across here. We're just going to darken the area of the, the fingers and this meaty area of the hand there. Let's just grab a lighter point. I'm kind of just grabbing where the light would catch first on the fingers. And don't be afraid to use reference for this stuff. I know I'm not 
using reference near as much as I should on the stream. I'm just kind of just for time's sake. <laughs> um, but you might want to look up like a hand and just because it'll take a while to develop all the until you kind of get a feel for for it. Oops. Put some the knuckles. It's gonna be a highlight. Uh, highlight down this middle. So that's kind of bending back. Too bright. Look in there. Let's start carving the shapes out of the shadows. much of the actual tip of the finger is going to be showing there. Oh, let's be on the racer again. <laughs> I'm just gonna <laughs> kind of look at kind of so that thumb is still a little, little too far forward. Remember, you you got reference built into yourself when you're drawing the human body. So take advantage of it when you need to. that you have it's not really like 50 50 on there like this is kind of the longer of the muscle there on the hand just but I had it maybe a little too short I'm just going in there and fixing that up now I'll just zoom out give me a better impression of 
how it's working. As you can see, this hand here, I haven't really done much on it either, but it's looking pretty good. Um, when especially zoomed out, it's really just about getting those highlights in the right spots and especially because the hands more bony than other parts of the body. So you can really define it more with just highlights and, and, and shadow. because I'm on a blender. I want a brush. Um, let's just go in here. See, I kind of do the same thing for both the things there. Just let the Soften that, those edges back up a little bit. Also kind of, I also kind of lean to the idea that realism should not never be your goal. Um, I mean, it is in practice and study, but um, but in like a finished piece, I don't. It's not my biggest. I don't think it should be your biggest priority. Depending on what you're working on, I guess, but um, some of the people that I really respect do more like um, really stylized work. Um, this is very hard to kind of develop that, at least for me. there but I think I'm gonna forego that all right well that's in there okay for now just gonna grab this brush and I'm just gonna soften that area up a bit where the highlights are going to be. 
So it's going to be a really bright area. Grab the hard brush here again. Grab this nice highlight I was using over on the arm here. And bring that into the hands to find that shape a little bit better. This one, I want the shape to not be quite as round as it is there. Might be getting a little too in, yeah, a little too into the weeds again there. I need to get back to and just making sure that that's giving you the proper impression and anything else is overkill on it. All right, well, I'm liking the way that's progressing. And I'm just gonna grab a image of a spear here with feathers on it. Just so I have kind of something to kind of work off of. Not sure how much, how many feathers and stuff I want it hanging off of it. So I just want a good indication here of a kind of cool spear. I'm just going to paste that in here. And so this is what I grabbed just to work from. Now I have kind of like more like an arrowhead looking shape here, but I think, yeah, we're going to have to do more of a, more of that shape going on here. Well, this looks like a, they wrap, it's wrapped in leather. And... Looks like I got a feather kind of coming off here. Just kind of. I mean, this I'm, I am going to keep kind of really loose because just we need that sense of movement coming off of it. And I kind of have a second one here with two feathers coming off of it, two bigger feathers. I can always go back in there and put in the highlights and stuff. And this one. This one has quite a few. I don't know if I want many more actually. one I kind of just give it that same shape but we'll kind of give it the air shape a little bit different there all right now I'm gonna 
Just gonna throw some kind of line tassel kind of off there. I'm just gonna grab some of the kind of leather tones I have in there. I feel like this brush's opacity isn't quite what I want, but it's closest to what I like for doing this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna keep it for now. Oops. I'm just kind of indicating that there's that maybe that the shape isn't exactly um, just that it's got a wrap around it so it's not going to be completely uniform looking mm. Yeah, I still have that too fat coming out there. Delete that. Actually, let's just grab the eraser here. See if I can get that. Oh, no, it's happening. So I'm drawing on the wrong layer. It's one thing you got to make sure is when you bring in this reference that you have put it all on the right layer. I'm just going to take what I have worked on, copy paste it, bring it down, uh, merge it with the layer below. So now it's still there. <laughs> That's why I kept trying to erase that section there and it wasn't erasing. Yeah, that's better. Scrapping uh, highlight again. I'm just lighting up areas of the those feathers a little bit. Some variation there in it, sorry, talking to myself, being really quiet. All right, well, that's kind of getting pretty close to what I wanted. share a little bit of the tone with the previous feather I got in there.
Okay, how long have I been going now? Let's just check this. Um, so we've been going about an hour. I'll go for maybe half an hour more today. Now this here, I want kind of more of a reddish tone. I'm just gonna grab, a, yeah, this. Start putting some highlight in there. That actually would be shaded. It would only be the edge here of that coming across, catching the light. Highlights might land on this cloth. Let's go back in with another color there and fix up stuff. It's not looking right. Same kind of thing, I'm just going to go in there with kind of the sky highlight there and some indications on the parts that are, well it's not going to be as reflective as the skin would be, but it helps to put in these kind of brighter highlights in here, gives you a better idea of Oops. Hmm. Want to be aware that, you know, that it is, might be, you might start having stuff disappear like I was having there. Just completely. Details. So just, just be aware of what you're doing. I don't want that to, some of these. Highlighted areas to roll over the edge. Just grab a little bit of an even brighter. Well, you know what? Maybe on that end, because the body will be shading. Yeah, we, we don't need as much. We'll just give us some light indications of. Or, no, maybe not. Make that better that way. What we'll do is we'll do it here though. Just kind of give little areas of highlight there on it. And just go back in there. Some of the where I don't like it. Just play around with it, move and paint, digital paint around. <laughs> Finding what you want. Well, it's looking not bad. Highlight again and 
do the same stuff here. I don't really mind that terminating to like a darker color there. Sorry, I'm always moving away from my mic here. Bad habit. Oh. You know what? That's where the shadow is. The highlight should be on this side. So that's where the fold is, top of the fold is. I'll just go back in there with the another brush and bring some of those highlights out a little bit better. Yeah, so I think that is starting to look really good. But under this, I should be getting, I think that's why I'm kind of not liking something there. I think because this should be casting, casting a shadow across the leg here. This is where we're not kind of, before we were kind of doing like ambient occlusion, kind of just general lighting. Um, I think that's like the term that they use in like um, usually 3D animation for it, but I don't know any other <laughs> term that really explains it as well. Um, so it's basically what, um, if you just had like a flat light on it, kind of what, what would be in shade and what wouldn't. And then you have your more um, direct lighting after that added to it. I need to add some of that to that. Just to that. I'm wondering if this area actually won't be getting a little bit more light than I have on it currently. And I kind of like this grayish tone coming off this. That's highlighting the back side of it a little bit. Kind of works with the just don't know if that's really plays well considering this side here. I don't have I don't have it light. I have it dark. Maybe I wouldn't be getting that kind of bleed through light there as much. I think, well, probably would here and kind of like this kind of connecting area here, but I don't know if I'd really have it on that part of the leg. And this part of the body would be shading that part of the. So what I'm thinking is like if the light's coming here, kind of like what, what is going to be kind of put in shade there. Oh, I'm gonna that cut into it of highlight but I 
Now the problem is, is I'm going way higher contrast here than I was up there, so it's having a little bit of issues here trying to figure out how I'm gonna make this look more cohesive. I mean it is a darker material but you don't want like your I could go back in here with some of the darker highlights here. Or darker shadows, sorry, not highlights. <laughs> Just something going on right in here too that I'm not a fan of. Something right there I'm not a fan of. I think I just went too dark here. And this is probably a little bit of a brighter fabric with more saturation than it probably should be. But I don't know if that's what's causing my, you know what, from, looks okay. I think it's just in here. If I bring that back out there. That's the section that I do wish that I went in a little bit more at the start and defined a little bit more. Some of these are just is a little harder to find kind of your footing on. But like everything else so far, we've figured it out over time. We have figured out all these things. So. Not thick of enough, not a thick enough line. You know what? I'm just gonna do like the indication that these are. There are some stripes. I do I like something around there too. I'll also have to. I indicate these moccasins here as we come towards them a little bit more. Yeah, it's just stuff in here I'm not a big fan of. Let's let's cut this. I want to cut that right out. And what I want to do is I'm gonna take this and I kind of give it more of a shape like that, and I can. Indicate like that's kind of coming across more like that. Yeah, I prefer that. And then what I'm going to do is just take this and that's going to go way more bunched than this whole section here. 
this is doing is it's kind of indicating that that's more it's pulling more to there and there's there's not going to be much fabric in this section so if I was to draw let me just grab do a new layer I'm just gonna grab like a white and here so basically so I have this here and what I want it to kind of be doing is it's going to be pulling more from going to be pulling this way and then there's going to be where the hip is and that's actually on the other side so let me just kind of work out kind of how this would go here that's all pulling in there and then this is kind of where the draping is going. So it's just kind of changing the shape of that a little bit. Which will allow me to kind of come in here and I'll get a little bit of more of an indication that that this is all kind of coming more to an end there point and this section I can actually just cut that out and move it Hmm. I don't know where I want it. All right, let's T. Now, it might actually be cooler if it's coming kind of more up there, and then that gives, separates it from from the silhouette of the pants and the front little area of the loin cloth kind of thing. Yeah, that kind of will work better, I think. I'm still having kind of a weird feeling about this glute kind of area here. I just find that it's... Okay, so light's coming in this way here kind of more from the side actually as the color of the sky would indicate that's more of a more of a sunset so the lights probably actually coming like that there which this is looking good for um, but maybe I can go higher up there Right now it's kind of, right now I have it kind of coming this way, which I don't mind either. This whole section here, I might, I'm just gonna play around with the, the level select, level, uh, correction here on that section so, I just, so I'm wondering if I want the mid-tones just to be a little bit darker yeah I don't mind that And I'll just go in here with the 
This is where I will use more like the blender tools, blending tools, and I will just soften up that transition there. Just so it disappears a little bit. I'll still have to go in there and refine that more. Probably. But that gives a better indication of that there. I'm also wondering if there's something going on with this shape here too. Should probably be more like that. It's better. And I think I think this is going to be, I don't want it that bunched up, so let's do, let's actually bring, I think I had that kind of, everything's kind of low on his hip here. I'm just going to go in there. Kind of make that as kind of the fabric section there too. And then we'll go in here more indicate kind of like in there. But there's some something more going on there. darkest color here just kind of do that there getting that more the way I think I want it but So I'll probably have another like little think and play around session at some point um, before the next before the next episode just to kind of get some of my ideas out, um, try a bunch of things where I don't want to be just wasting your guys' time with um, certain things. Um, but I'm thinking. Let's see where we were at. So we were at this. Nope. We're at this. Put more in that space. Last episode, and now we're more at this. So I think we came a long way and got it more to that original kind of idea where there's way more movement feeling a movement than this this is very stiff like he's falling as opposed to this one right here you can really see him kind of arching and it's he's just way more active into the actual movement going on so next episode we'll try to get more into the t-rex here and then we'll figure out the rocks back here um, and softening up the edges here because um, you won't have what I want in focus is going to be kind of this section in here 
this is where all the like really good all the right like detail and stuff work is going to go into then out from or maybe i'll just circle it here so this section here is where i'm just going to focus more on the detail and actually it'll probably be, end up being more like this and i'm going to start feathering kind of this stuff out of focus the stuff over here um and we're going to keep kind of the sharpness kind of there because that's going to be the focal point i think of where i'm trying to lead your eye but i'm thinking it's tough it's hard to get this t-rex if i lower him more in frame like if i take this frame and i lower it at what point does the cross section at the bottom here um, start being an issue of like do I lose too much do I gain does it does something how much of him do I want can I cut off really um, like where should that termination be should it be before the ribs should it be should he see more of the legs like those are decisions I'm gonna have to make next time for sure um, like even right now just thinking about it like I'm feeling like this top jaw is kind of small compared to the bottom and I want it to be kind of more like that So little stuff like that I'll be playing with, but there's an issue here too, where I'm seeing the underside of the jaw here, but the way that this head is tilted, it's tilted this direction and you wouldn't see that part of the jaw. So I'm going to have to bring that more in line with, with what we're seeing and the way that this goes down here, it wouldn't. I would more I would go more to like a flat in that section so there's little stuff like that that I'm gonna have to tweak with the Tyrannosaurus Rex here too um, but thanks for watching this one and um, as always um, thanks for watching and we'll see you